Hey guys, this is Rick Huckabee here. Thanks for watching our YouTube video here with all of us here at the Kenny store. Thanks for having me, you guys. Glad for sure, man. This is a great spot, y'all. We really like it. Man. We love it. I, I can't believe like how many of my, my buddies have played here or are gonna play here. I mean, it's yeah. crazy. It's like, anyway, small, we are, small, we are, small we are world, music, really. We're music fans, yeah, we're, so well, if, if I'm honored to be here. Thank y'all well, for having absolutely. me, man. Thanks I, for I couldn't wait, man. Yeah. I, was, I was excited, dude. I, I'm I, curious. There were, you were saying that you're a guitar nerd. I mean, what was your what was your first guitar that you ever got? My first one? Yeah. Still have it. Um, it was a it's a Gibson Dove. My okay. dad got it for me when I graduated from high school. Nice. I still have it. And then I I got a a Gibson Dove. It's a Dove, yeah. yeah. And it's a nineteen ninety model too. And so it, that one is now it's I guess it's vintage now, but mm -hmm. It, I didn't know that when, right. when I went in. He didn't know that either. Right. My dad's passed away, but he didn't know that when he got it for me when I graduated from high school. But I've had it wow. ever since then. And then when I moved to Nashville, I had a, I still got it too. I can't believe it. But I, but uh, <laughs> it's like a parts Telecaster, sure. Mexican Telecaster, but a Fender rep made it. Mm -hmm. You know, he put a humbucker in it. Right. It's still the baddest telly I got, man. It just, it, it's a one trick pony, but it's, it's, it's got a thing about it. Does it. its thing. Yeah. yeah. And then that's a, a a loud acoustic that I've had for a long, long time. And I'm not, you know, for to be a guitar nerd, which I am. Yeah. I mean, I don't own a lot of guitars. I have like maybe seven or eight of them, but I like finding out about them and playing other ones. I just sure. like, I have the ones I know work for me and I right. just kind of use, I just kind of use you know, Same with amps too. I don't, right. I've, I've sold more amps than I've bought just because I just got, ah, that's, Give me one of those. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. I just, I, I, I kind of, but I still, I luckily haven't, I've only sold one guitar and I wish I'd, I'd not, I wish I hadn't done that, but luckily I've held on to What was it? It was, it was an Ovation Celebrity, you know, with the, the backs the back on them with their yeah. turn like that. Mm -hmm. And um, that was a good guitar, but I, I, I was an idiot. I traded it and sold a key, an amp two for it and I just, Wish I had just kept it. It wasn't a great guitar, but it was. It played really good. It right. sounded great. Yeah. You know, but other had than some that, memories on it, I'm sure it did. Like yeah. When I first started playing clubs and stuff, that was what I used. And yeah. then, but other than that, luckily I've, I've not going to held on to all the all the rest of them. All, but, the, all yeah. the good ones. Yeah. But where, that's where, where, I where, is, where was home before Nashville. My family's all from Louisiana, and then Go we ahead. moved to West Virginia when I was a kid. And I grew up there, and then I moved to Nashville in '96. I've been there ever since. And then my 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 family moved there after I did. My, my, I got you. my mom and my brother. Everybody followed you. They did, and they've been there damn near as long as me. It's I can't. <laughs> it's a shocker because I didn't. I couldn't believe that they moved when I, a few years after I did. But man, am I glad that they did. And I right. love it. You know, it's a big town. You can never see them if you don't want to. But I mean, right. I, we see each other about once a week. We live in different parts of town, but well, good. but yeah, man, I'm I'm glad they're I'm glad they're there. But all my family is still in Louisiana. They're all still there. Where at? All over the place. Spread out. Spread out. My dad is from Bozier City, Shreveport. My mom's from a little farming community in Central Louisiana. And then my brother and I are both born in Baton Rouge, and then we still go there for family reunions. We're going on a big bass fishing trip next month down there. With, we do it about once a year when we see everybody. Then they come to Nashville for Thanksgiving, but no one did it this past year because right, of all the COVID. bullshit. Right. Yeah, you know. So it's it's a uh, it's good having them there. Right. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, good, I mean, man. Kind of still see them. You live what for eleven years? You said. Yeah, yeah. That's moved a long there. time, dude. Yeah, you, I, you're I, a native. Yeah. <laughs> He's in there. Like, every time yeah. we go to visit, I never ran across anybody that was from Tennessee. No one is. No. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's all everybody's moving in from the outside. Yeah. It's always been like that too. But that town is. Uh, she, we so probably got a, a dozen mutual friends between I us. At this I point. can guarantee you that we do. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one cool thing about it is it's a small town for for that. That's how big it's small. Especially the musicians part of it, like you know Leroy and and, and those guys. I, mean, I know them very well. I mean, like, but it's just from years of right. seeing them around and being in the same circles. Yeah, being in yeah. the same circles, having the same you know songwriting buddies and stuff. Right. So. We're, we're, um, I mean, what's, I guess, what's your, I mean, music, your full-time job? So far. So far. <laughs> is it primarily playing or is it studio or is it playing lead with, with guys like it's Tracy? And everything. Whatever? It's everything from playing to doing 
studio work to doing uh, the, writing songs. I mean, that's that's how I've. Is that the main way? That's been the main way I've been I've been able to make a, a living. The, Tracy Lawrence gave me the biggest uh, leg up in my career. I was 22 years old at the time. This is 1998, and. Uh, he hired me to play in his band, <laughs> and then he cut five of my songs on an album. I mean, I, mean, I was 23 years old. Wow. And like, you and I are about the same age, you probably. Like, when did you graduate high school? 93. Okay, I graduated in 94. So yeah. Right there, right yeah. Back. So he so, put five songs on on, on an album when you were 23 years old. I had 30 old. cuts with Tracy Lawrence as a writer. God, wow. And, I, and, and here's the, tr the crazy thing. I just saw him last week. It's so funny. Because we're we're like this, but we're like this. You know what I mean? We right. don't see each other. Friends, like, you don't ever see him. And then when you see him, you pick up right, right. where you left off. That's sure. him. But he did. He, he uh, On that Lessons Learned album, he he cut five of, my, five of my songs, I think. No, like ten of them. And five of them made the album. I could not believe wow. this. And I was in his band. So I went from, this is no bullshit. I went from, I was a construction worker. I was laying asphalt. I went from that to playing in his band. Long wow. story how that all happened, but it life changed. But it happened. So but it yeah, happened. So and and luckily it, that opened the door for a lot of everything things, else. Yeah. I and mean, I got a record deal from all that and everything. I mean, you know, just but I, none of that would have happened had I not right. That's awesome. Started doing that. As far as from a songwriter standpoint, is there from somebody that wants to that looks up to songwriters? That's you know they have this thing that just is special. You know. Sure. Is there anything that when you started, did anybody give you any advice that just stuck with you as far as writing and honing your craft? And I mean, is there is there anybody that just really stuck out to you? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, he Tracy for one was really like that. But I remember when I first got there, um, I wrote with a guy named Jim McBride. Jim wrote Chattahoochee and a bunch of other oh, okay. things for Alan Jackson. And I remember. I sat down with him one day and, and I played him some songs and I, I didn't really know what I was doing at all. And uh, I remember him telling me, he said, he said, man, he goes, uh, he said, I got to be honest with you. He said, because I can't help you unless I'm honest right. with you. Mm -hmm. And he said, these songs aren't very good, but here's why they're not. And here's how they can be. So to answer your question. Wow. Yeah, it was really cool of him to do that. That's yeah. That's yeah, because because now to be honest, most people won't do that. You know, they'll tell you what you want to hear. So I, I think what you end up having to do is like advice I give young writers is, is try to hang out with older songwriters as much as you can and don't let them jade you. But sure, you but know, learn the ropes kind of that way. It's a it's a it's an interesting thing. It's not something. It's something that some of my favorite songwriters are guys, the, the Dean Dillons, mm -hmm. the guys that are older guys. Well, there's a reason why they're Tom that. T. Hall. Yeah, Tom T. Hall. Tom T. because it's just years of honing that that craft. That you know, it's a skill. You that know, makes perfect sense. Yeah. When you write, do you hear the? Uh, you think you hear the words first, or do you hear the music? Or do sometimes you it's sometimes it's it's either or. I mean, I, sometimes if if somebody, a lot of it's just talking, like we're doing here. I do a lot of co-writing, so like. I was writing a song the other day with this young lady that's an up-and-coming artist and. She was saying something about somebody that was bugging her that she has to hang around all the time. And she said, I just want to go somewhere without you. I said, that's our title right there. There you, you know? go. So, huh. we, you know, but we didn't have one. I mean, it, right. but, so, but it's just, just kind of came out. It's just to her, it was to her credit. I mean, it's just like, it's just talking about him and then finding out how to put all that together, you know. Makes sense. So you, so you I guess when you're writing, um, since you've, since you've had, Tracy takes so many songs. You've had Trace Atkins with Muddy Water and and uh, beer, you know, beer with Jesus. Beer with Jesus from Thomas Rhett. Now that you're writing, I mean, does it is it difficult for you when you sit down to write to go, all right, I got to write a song for Tracy today because I know he's done this many and I know right. that he's going to give me a little bit more. Yeah. He's going to look at it a little bit longer right. than it just going through, you know, through a public. Do yeah. you work for a publishing company? I do. I, okay. I, I was, I, I, okay. I, 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 not at the moment, but I, I was actually writing for Dean Dillon's company. That's who I was okay. working for recently. But, uh, yeah, for him, for him, for example, like, he's really good at telling you what he's looking for. Okay. So that okay. helps tremendously. Right. Like, sure. And and if he feels like that maybe, the, let's like, a, if you bring him something, he goes, well, I've kind of already done that or something like that. But he's also good, too, that if you do write with him, I was writing with him a couple of weeks ago, and he, he's, 
he's always got great ideas. I mean, he right. just he just and he doesn't a lot of times know how to put them together, but that's right. what he calls yeah, me and buddy to do that for. Right. But he always has like some great idea. I get worried if he doesn't have one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so I'm like, I don't have one. one. <laughs> I, I try to tell people all the time when they're saying, you know. Well, I like that guy, but he don't write his own music. I'm going, you know, okay, so George Strait didn't write his own music. Okay. Oh, wow. George Strait was trying to run basically a multi-million dollar business, you know. He's dealing with booking agents, managers. All, yeah, he's got people hired to do so much, but that guy's still, you know, those artists. So it's really no fault of a recording artist that doesn't write their own music. Not at all. And why would you? Yeah. I mean, if, if, if I had the voice and ended up in Nashville tomorrow, first day on Broadway, signed me a contract, yeah. had never written a song, and they said, hey, we've got 200 of the best songwriters in the country all came right here, here just like <laughs> the musicians do. Um, do you have any of your own songs? No, I don't have any of my own songs. We, we offer we no, no, I'm not going to take those <laughs> great ones. Now I'm going to write my yeah. stuff yeah, so I, got, I can be authentic. I got these. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, yeah, I've been working on something on the ride up. I want to try to pitch. Right, yeah. Get the hell out of the way and let the guys that do this for a living no question. do I, it. I, I, um, agree, I agree with that. Conway Twitty's no, didn't write right. any of those songs. One of the greatest singers to ever, I mean, you know. George Strait's the best example of it. Sure. Know? Well, and then there's, but then there's, it's so funny, you know, I grew up at the same time you did, so I don't guess I ever thought that Alan Jackson wrote his own song. Right. But he did. He wrote quite a few of them. Mm, quite a bunch few. of them. I mean, bunch of number ones, and then I think he ended up pinning like another five for other, other artists, people. even after he was the Alan Jackson that we know right. that he wrote that that didn't work for his album or whatever, and. I'm sure one of the buddies would like. I'm sure, yeah. Should I take that damn thing in a heartbeat for you? Well, I'll yeah. take it. See what you can do yeah, with you're it. You're in the real world. Sure, I'll take that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I need to stand out there 90 minutes a night or I can walk <laughs> to the mailbox. I really don't care. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm with you. I, 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 songwriting is just what, how I sort of evolved once I got there. But when I moved there, I just moved there to be a singer. It's the right. craziest thing ever. And then, long story, but I ended up writing my way into doing the things that I wanted to do, not that's knowing awesome. that that's what I was supposed <laughs> yeah, to do. Yeah, that's awesome. You know? so that's just, great. But, I didn't, I, I, but you didn't know, and then I was just like, well, all right, I guess this is what I need to be doing. That's, so, that's been the crazy. Whole, that's been the crazy thing. Um, Dean Dillon, I having a conversation with Dean Dillon up there before his show, and I said, man, I'm so excited to have you. And he said, man, all you got to do is call, you know, and I'll be here. And I said, I'll be honest with you. I never would have imagined that we ever would have been able to afford to book you with just a 150 sure. person capacity. And he said, well, you may not have been able to at one point, but now with the mailbox money like it is, he <laughs> said, I play a whole lot cheaper. You know, yes. and, I mean, once you make it, it, and I think every songwriter would be just like you. Or I mean, Dean didn't go to Nashville to be a songwriter. Want I mean, everybody wants artist. to be an artist. Want there to be a star. And mm -hmm. you do that, and then once you accomplish the financial situation from royalties and stuff like that, it makes it a lot easier yeah. to go out on the road and do what you really enjoy, or where, that you where make you your, your, your initial dream, right. Right. you know, yeah, yeah, where you want it, you know. So yeah, yeah. he it's, was uh, he was one of the ones that went out there, and, and there were so many people that back in those days they started working at Opryland. He was one of the ones. That, oh, okay. He was in the, one of those variety shows right. like they would have out there, mm -hmm. and that's how he got. Introduced to publishers and started writing songs. And hmm. He's a he is a, a legend, no doubt. Number one for you, dream. You you write a song, you know it's a hit, you know it'll go, it'll go number one whether it's on the pop charts, whether it's country charts. Um, who's your number one living artist, alive or dead, that you would want to cut your wow, song? What whether it's to you know I mean, today, as of right now today, you've been in the music business now since. You said 98. Well, yeah. Oh, so man. You've been at this a little bit of time. If you could write one and say, and anybody would say yes to it and put it on the radio. You said living or dead? Living or dead. I'm saying living or dead, not just living. Holy but, moly. That's you know, a I'm great, saying great you're, Well, I, I, I always wanted, to, I would love to have, and maybe I still can one day, I, I, I would, would be every songwriter is to, to have a George Strait. Okay. Know, so, it's, so it's. So, but if, if, if it weren't him I just always thought that 
that's someone that's, that's passed away. I would, I would, I would have said Conway Twitty just really? because he was the greatest. I don't think he gets near enough credit. credit. People don't ever talk about him near enough. And then I listen to. I him, agree. And I and I, I go back and I go, wow. No, I mean, but just because some of the songs that he did cover, some some of my favorites. Troy Seals is one of my favorite songwriters. Troy wrote "Don't Take It Away" and some of the oh, okay. big hits that he had. But like, I would always would like to have been like a modern day version of Troy and what he did for gotcha. someone like Tom. Gotcha. That would be cool for, for, for me. You? But I got to do it with Tracy, so I, I, that's pretty damn close. Well, yeah, no yeah. doubt. Because no, he's, no, he's, he's a buddy, it. but right. I, I would pick those two guys, yeah. Okay. Could you give us kind of the, the, would you say Muddy Water was your biggest hit or? That was the that was the first one that really kind of really got me going. And Can you tell us kind of the story behind how all that happened? Really good story. Um, I wrote that with my friend Monty Criswell. Monty's a, a legendary. My wife used to cut Monty's uh, mom's hair. Really? Yeah, no, just bring it up. Yeah. Yeah. There's one. There's <laughs> there's one. one. <laughs> I know what happened. That there's one. Getting, there he is. Just, 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 got, just, got, got, just, just, just got a little smaller. Just got a little smaller right there. That's well, funny. Monty and I. This is this is a great story because this is typical Monty. This is typical me. So we got together one day. And I was making my first album, mm-hmm. and I had this idea called Mash the Gas. And I was like, I just want to write this title. Like, it's going to rock. I got this riff. Yada, yada, yada. He says, okay. You know, and he's, he writes on piano. He's an he's a incredible Beast. guy. Yeah. And so we go through it, blah, 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 and, I, and, and we get about half of it. And back in those days, we would go to lunch. We don't really do that now, but back then people it was way more common for writers to go to go to lunch to mm-hmm. see bump into other writers or whoever right sure. so we went to lunch and we came back and he completely switched gears and he started playing the, like the music to, to what became muddy water and he goes he goes just he goes work with me just for a minute on this he said i got this title and it's called muddy water i said huh so we're, we're doing I was like, well, what we're the other song? Today. What happened? We're, 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 what are you doing? You're <laughs> switching your switch. You're, you're hanging left on me here. He goes, no, no, just try it. Half an hour later, we wrote that. Okay. And then we went back and finished Master finished. Cast. Wrote them both the same day. So that was about half an hour. And thank God I listened to him. I was going to say. Because one of them changed my career for the better and one of them didn't. Right. You know? So right. I can tell you which one it was. And it was all that. It was, But that's Monty. He's just so smart. And. I will say though that I don't normally feel that way, but like I ended up going and cut and mash the gas, and I put it on my record. But Muddy Water just sat around for a while before, before that got before cut. that got cut, two or three years in fact. Yeah. But I do remember even just the work copy, you know, just me and him on a piano. It, it, there was something real special that about that it. There was. I just down. and I didn't even really want to acknowledge it. I was just kind of like, ah, yeah. And then the more I listened to it, I was just like. There's something, it's and special. I didn't think anybody would cut it. I just thought, yeah, there was a, you know, just it was a little gift. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Sure. So that was you were it. probably excited to play it, you set and everything else. You know, even though they cut it, you were like, I was I still, love I still it. loved it. And then that song got put on hold, and that was on hold for another year. How does that process work? Good question. They, his label at the time was Capital, and they, we had done a demo of it, and they heard it, and they said, we want to put this on hold for him. And they put it on hold. They wouldn't hear anything for a long time. And then they said they're going at, at that particular time they were going to put out a greatest hits on him. Okay. And they said that it's going to make the greatest hits album. Mm-hmm. Then they called us back and said it's not going to make the greatest hits album. So we were kind of deflated at the time. I was in between deals and I'd already been on Warner Brothers as an artist and I'd been let go and I didn't really have much going on. And then he called me one day and he said, "Hey man, he goes, uh, he's going to cut that song." And I said, dude, I'm so tired of talking about that song. <laughs> yeah. I did. I said that to sure. I, said, I said, I'm so tired of talking about that song. I'm mad at you about that song, about that song said, for even playing. I, 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 I don't want to talk. He goes, no, no, no. He said, they're, they're, they're going to cut it, and he's going to make a new album. Sure enough, he did cut it. He put it on his new album, and it was the first thing. How long can they hold one on a hold? As long as they want. Really? Yeah. And there used to be some some rules on that where they'd say it's like a year or anything like that. But I think... It's hard to tell an artist that big that no, you can't have yeah. it on hold. You know, if they still want it, and he did, and uh, he wanted to record something for his mother. I guess is what is what he said. So that's why he recorded hmm. that song. And then I thought their record of it was so much cooler than what we did. It took it to another place. Mm-hmm. Frank Rogers produced that, but 
But yeah, shows you what I know. What an Nothing. amazing song. <laughs> Thanks, man. For that to come out in a half hour too. Oh, I, I, I just, I don't know. It just, wow. and then you know, and then stupid me, I'm like, okay, okay, let's wrap that up. Now get, get back, back to, to the, the rocking rock rock verse. <laughs> 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 yeah. I totally did. He just like, and, and Monty had to be laughing, going, yeah, you know, you know how much money I just made you. Yeah, he got to say, I told you so. About three years later. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. for three years, I'm sure you were like, I, had to, I, song, I, 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 I totally just quit, forget, yeah. I just quit thinking about it. And then next thing you know, who hmm. shows you what I know. That's but amazing. For three years, you were way more pressure and mashed the gas than you were at Muddy Water. I totally was. <laughs> and I said, I said, he's going to cut that song? They said, yeah, right. it's on the record. It's the first. I couldn't believe it. That's awesome. Shocked. That's yeah, man. Hmm. Yeah. That's so wild. Um, man, that's really. You want to play one for us? Sure. <laughs> Eighteen wheeler dropped me off at that ceiling and sun. Sunny morning sunlight in her eyes. It's a long way from LA back here to my hometown. But there's a man in me I need to drown. So back to